Well, welcome to today's webinar workshop training, uh, your 2024 digital marketing plan here with Tree Service Digital. I'm your host, Wesley Smith uh, of treeservicedigital.com. So thanks so much for joining us today. We put on um, different webinars throughout the year, and usually they're bite-sized pieces of your digital marketing plan or program, little things you can do to kind of you know work in your in your local area for internet marketing. But this is the most anticipated one of the year because we typically put on the comprehensive marketing plan, kind of show you like the full program, the full approach to everything you need to be doing. Because with marketing in, in any business, it's not really one thing that you're doing. It's rather a multitude of things that you do simultaneously at the same time so that people consistently see your brand, see your business and see your message, therefore getting them to take action at some point. So I'll share my slides with you so you guys can see that. And uh, thanks for being here. Again, I mentioned it before I started recording, but if you guys have any questions, um, there'll be a question and answer box there. You guys can ask any questions in that box. I'll pull it up now just in case anything pops in there. I'll take breaks periodically, get a sip of water, things like that. And uh, so if you got any questions, I'll try to answer them promptly in that question and answer box there. You should see it. Um, if you guys could, if you have a second to click in that question and answer box, just type in, we can see the slides. Every now and then it's showing the screen behind the slides. Just want to make sure everything looks good. You can see the PowerPoint slides behind um, the screen share there for Zoom. All right. Looks like it is broadcasting correctly there. Again, you guys ask any questions in the question and answer box. Happy to answer those periodically as we go through the slides here in the training workshop. Well, hope you guys are ready. This is going to be your 2024 digital marketing plan for growing tree service companies, arborists, tree healthcare, plant healthcare companies alike. Uh, and this works with plugging in a program for your digital marketing so that everything's kind of working systematically, programmatically, and consistently uh, and predictably with results, right? Because if you show up everywhere, you just got a lot more chances of you know, growing your business and getting more people giving you a call. So here's what my plan is for the session today for you guys. It's to set goals for 2024. You know, how many leads to hit your target for your revenue goal for 2024? We'll break that down by monthly, quarterly type goals. The three fundamentals to marketing success, how to optimize your website for conversion in 2024 and beyond, uh, along with other things for your paid ads and things like that. Uh, the big picture of all of the online marketing channels you should be tapping into to maximize your lead flow online. The latest trends that you need to focus on in 2024. Get some updated things uh, on this presentation today. Uh, and develop a custom action plan based on where you are now and what you need to do right now for 2024. So if you want to get the most out of this training and workshop, you, know, you probably want to turn off your cell phone, maybe turn off Facebook and just plug into your business. Just think about your business and what this means to you and kind of how many leads, how much revenue you want to produce next year as far as growth from where you were in 2023. It'll really help you if you just really tune in for about 45 minutes. And uh, if you're serious about doubling or tripling the amount of leads that you pull from your local online marketing for tree service, then the next 45 minutes or so are going to be critical. So who am I and why should you listen to me? Maybe it's your first time on the webinar. Welcome aboard. Thanks for showing up. Uh, I've been in internet marketing for close to 10 years now through various other uh, businesses in the past. And then I created my own agency about seven years ago um, and then branched off to tree service. So we specialize in tree service contractor internet marketing. That's the only thing we do. Uh, we got expert web development, digital marketing team, worked with dozens and dozens and dozens, in fact, over a hundred tree service companies across the United States. And we know what works to generate a flood of new business and grow your business. Uh, we're also members of TCIA and ISA. Uh, and I also wrote the book, How to Win with Internet Marketing for Tree Service Contractors. If you want a free copy, just shoot us an email on any of the invites that you received or go to our website, uh, fill out a contact form, just let us know you want it. And we'll be happy to ship you out a free copy. Um, so we've worked with you know several tree service companies, 100 plus tree service companies across the United States. Some named brands that you may have heard of, Monster Tree Service, we're currently working with them on some of their franchisees. Uh, and then other companies uh, across the United States. And again, like I mentioned before, this is all we do. So we don't work with roofers and, you know, family law attorneys and personal injury attorneys or carpet cleaning companies or anything like that. We're just focused on the tree care niche and I uh, really love it. You know, we got some really good results for the tree service industry several years ago and decided to pivot and just do tree service. So we're happy to be all in on this niche help you guys market your business. So this is your 2024 digital marketing plan. Let's get right into it. So let's set clear goals. What are your goals for 2024? 
you know, what are your revenue goals for 2024? Let's say in 2023, you did a million dollars or $5 million or $10 million. And you want a new lofty, hefty goal for this year for growth. What is that new revenue goal? And again, guys, remember that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. That's right from Albert Einstein there. And so you want to set clear goals because you don't want to just be drifting a sea, right? Just drifting out there all alone uh, in the waters, not really knowing which way you're going. Just whichever way the wind blows is kind of which way you go. You know what I mean? You want a clear plan. And so if you have clear goals, you literally have the wind in your sails pushing you to your destination, to your target, where you want to go. So you can break that down into um, different uh, monthly goals, quarterly goals, et cetera. So what's your current snapshot? So what's your average monthly revenue? that you guys are doing right now in your business? What is the typical number of jobs run per month? Um, other key metrics, maybe you know your average invoice amount that you're doing, average conversion in the field, number of crews. So maybe part of your growth program or your growth formula for next year is getting up your average invoice. Maybe your average invoice was 950 or maybe it was 1150 and you wanna increase that by 25%, get a little bit more money per job. Uh, maybe getting a little bit better at the sales process on the site when you're there, kind of just upselling different things. And what is your long-term vision for, for example, 2026? So two years from now, what would you like your annual revenue to be then? Maybe the number of crews uh, and why? Why would you want your, your goals to increase or what's your long-term vision? Like, why is that important to you? So what is your goal for 2024? And you know how many leads will you need monthly to get there? Uh, so there was a Harvard study done, this was decades ago, but um, they interviewed a set of grads from Harvard and 84% of them had no specific goals. 13% had goals, but they weren't written down. 3% only had clear written goals and plans to accomplish them. And the results were, were pretty huge. It was revealing. The 13% of the class who had goals were earning on average twice as much as the 84% who had no goals at all. So if you just, you know, throw spaghetti up against the wall, don't really know what's going to work or where you're going. Um, generally, you're going to you're going to pretty much not get anywhere. Right. It's uh, and even more staggering is 3% who had clear written goals were earning on average 10 times as much as the other 97% put together. So a lot of times when you write the goals down it's a daily reminder of your goal. And so every day you see it, right? If you put it up on your wall or you put it in your office or wherever, you're going to see that every single day. And it's going to make you kind of more propel you to move forward with your goals. Um, number two, let's go over your marketing strategy. So we set the goals. You kind of know where you want to go. Let's set the marketing strategy for 2024. Uh, and what we go, we're a big proponent of the accelerated growth model, which basically taps into your organic paid search and your database of existing customers to market to these folks, okay? And that's kind of the, you know, the accelerated growth model. Like you, you wanna be anywhere and everywhere online. Um, and really you wanna drive leads, number one, to your business. This is done through organic, like SEO, your Google Maps, showing up highly on the first page of Google search on mobile, on desktop, all the different avenues. Um, it's also about your paid ads because those show up at the very, very top, even above the organic listings. It's also about keeping a grasp and building a fence around your current customer database, right? So when you build up your customer database, every estimate you go on, every appointment you go on should be entered into a CRM system, a database system like Single Ops, Jobber, Arbor Gold, anything, Arbo Star, anything you can put in place in your business that you feel like is easy, it's intuitive, it's able to be used by everybody. This is going to build up your customer database, which is everything in any business. So if one day you decide you want to sell it, having a database of your customers and all the previous jobs and invoices and things you've done for them is going to be highly important for that buyer. So there's a lot of things that are important for down the road that you need to put in place today. And once you get these leads coming in from all these different avenues, you want to maximize the conversion, right? From your website leads, um, your reputation is going to help do that with your Google reviews, Facebook reviews, et cetera. Automation, so a lot of different follow-ups and touch points. Um, and then you want to optimize results. So your total spend versus your average cost per lead, 
and the return on investment that you're getting from all these marketing channels. And so this kind of just shows it again in a different visual. You want to drive leads through organic website, SEO, Google Maps, paid search, Google local service ads, Google ads, being Yahoo ads, et cetera, Facebook ads, database, right? Your existing customer database, email marketing, text marketing. So those people really bring people in. And then you want to maximize those conversions with all the leads that come in through your reputation, automation, a lot of touch points, and then you want to optimize the results. So once you get the results, you want to toggle what budget to increase, what budget to decrease, et cetera. Uh, so what's your strategy? Where do you need to focus most? Maybe you're already doing well on local service ads, but your Google ads are not really doing that well. Maybe your website's generating a lot of leads through organic traffic and you're showing up everywhere across your local markets, um, but you're not doing so well on email marketing or text marketing, or you're not doing direct mail or putting signs out regularly, things like that. So where do you need to focus the most, uh, this is the digital dominance method that we show kind of a visual to kind of give you that, you know, that thing in your head to know kind of what all you need to be doing. Number one is your website, SEO, Google reviews, reputation, rankings, and where you show up in the local market. Number two are paid ads, right? All the paid ad channels. Number three is retargeting. So simply having small retargeting ads to everybody that's seen your brand over the last 90 to 120 days to further entice them to convert and give you guys a call. Number four, paid online directory. So if what we're doing is not enough or what you're doing is not enough, you know, with Google, with Facebook and everything else, there's other avenues you can tap into like Yelp or YP.com, Angie. I know there's a variety of opinions on those. So just putting it out there so you kind of know other lead sources. Uh, number five, repeat and referral business. So this is email marketing, text marketing, social media marketing, things like that. Number five, there's paper lead sources out there you can tap into. Number seven, social media advertising. So this is, you know, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, just kind of running ads on these platforms where people see you over and over again, maybe dangling some sort of incentive in front of them. Hey, you know, book now for 10% off winter tree trimming, you know, call now or fill out this form here and we'll be in touch with you shortly, that type of thing. And then number eight is a referral program to your existing customers with maybe an incentive to refer your business over to their friends, family, neighbors, et cetera, in, in exchange for a monetary payout. So maybe a gift card or tickets to the game or something like that kind of really helps just propel people to do it. And then nine is last but not least, but it's offline. It's direct mail. So that also works very, very well and signs also. So after seeing all of that, where do you need to focus the most? You know, you can just write that down. Like maybe we're doing two out of those 10 things or two out of those eight things or whatever, but we need to kind of you know, really ramp up this other place. Again, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them into the Q&A box there. Happy to jump in and answer those as we go. Uh, is your website set up to convert visitors to your website into leads, right? Visitors to callers or visitors to filling out a web form. So is it a nice looking website, aesthetically pleasing? It has your branding and logo in the top left, your service areas where all you cover, your clickable phone number in the top right, just so people can see it plain as day as soon as they get there. And then lots of calls to action, you know, request a free estimate, request a free estimate, um, just a good looking website. Because again, your website is going to be the hub of everything you do with your online presence. If people find you on social media, if they find you on Google search, they find you on Google ads, direct mail, wherever they find you, they see your sign out in the yard or they see your trucks, guess where they're going to end up? They're going to end up on your website. So it needs to look really professional and personable. Uh, and so why is conversion so important? So if you get a really, really crummy website and it doesn't convert very well, or it's got a bad user experience or people try to click on it, but it spins and spins and spins and doesn't load, people get really bored uh, fast and they just back click off of those websites. And you don't want that to happen because that could have been a $5,000 job. So it's very important because let's say you got a hundred leads in this scenario, your conversion rate is super low because you don't have any follow-up. Your website experience is not very good. And let's say you book 30 jobs out of a hundred leads. And so that's about 30 book jobs, 30% conversion. And your average ticket was roughly 650. And I realize this is a low ticket number, but just for the math, you can see 30 jobs times $650 is 19,500 in revenue. On the flip side, let's say you've got a beautiful website, very professional, it loads fast. People can 
fill out a form. They can give you a call. They kind of see pictures of you and your business, your crews, your shirts. It's a highly converting website. Let's say you get the same amount of leads, 100 leads, but you end up converting 70% of those people that jump on the website. And you get automated follow-up where you always get in touch with people that fill out your forms. You don't lose those leads. Uh, let's say you book 70 jobs out of 100 leads and your average ticket can simply be the same as it was before at 650, but you're booking double the jobs over double. So then now you're at $45,500 in revenue as opposed to 19,500. So you've practically doubled your revenue with a good, highly converting website and web experience. How do we optimize for conversion? Well, how do we get our website to do this to make sure we get those results? Here's 12 critical elements to enhance conversion on your website. So you want to speak to your target customer. You know, what are their fears and frustrations? Why should they choose you? Be real, you know, use authentic images of your team on the homepage and throughout the website. Um, it's really good to have a website welcome video. Um, you know, that's something a lot of tree companies don't do, but you could literally just do like a selfie video, right? Hey, thanks so much for visiting our website here at XYZ Tree Service. Browse around our website if you're looking for competitive rates on tree services and professional. Uh, we've got all the uh, licenses and, um, you know, licensed and insured um, things that, you know, that, you know, pretty much anything that anybody's looking for that would be your customer and just record a video like that, you and your team, or you want a job or something like that. Yeah. People get to know who you are on the business and you're going to get more leads that way. Um, videos for each one of your services, maybe a service showing tree removal. If you've got a crane or grapple or, you know, however you guys do that work and you can have those on each one of the service pages and a video explaining maybe why someone should contact you versus the competition leverage social proof. Uh, get the basics in order. So phone number in the right-hand corner, kind of like we looked at a minute ago. Ensure that there's a web form customers can fill out for an estimate because not everybody wants to call right at that moment. Add credibility with authority symbols, you know, like BBB, if you have a BBB account, uh, Angie's List, Google reviews, Facebook reviews, things like that. Just a nice screenshot of like a five-star rating. Uh, ensure you've got clear calls to actions on each page that speak to your customer avatar, which is your basically your ideal customer and tell them exactly what to do next. Make sure your website is mobile optimized with an easy click to call function. Leverage live chat. Some people fill out a chat form before they're gonna fill out a form or make a call. Uh, and your website load speed does matter, like we talked about a minute ago. And engage via SMS and phone via marketing automation. This is big in today's day and age. If you can text people when they fill out a form on your website or text people they give you guys a call, you're gonna convert more people into appointments. Point blank. We see it all the time. Uh, is your website set up to convert visitors to callers? Just another example of being personable, having your actual trucks in the header photo, your branding, showing people your TCIA logo, if you're members, ISA, if you're a certified arborist or a member of that organization, just things, you know, license number, arborist certification number, things like that really help give people that confidence to give you guys a call. And be real and authentic, like mentioned before. So this is a business owner who's got his picture on the website so people know who they're doing business with, even though that person may not show up to the job site or go give the estimate or do the work. At least they know who the owner is um, and it looks personable, right? It gives them that kind of feeling that they're hiring the right company. Um, but yeah, if you got any kind of like videos or um, anything you've done with the local news or you know, different things like that. You can leverage that on the website. You can put these YouTube video embeds on your website so people can see a video of you, or your business, or your trucks, or other people mentioning how great your business is, that type of thing. So social proof is, you know, plugging in your Google reviews uh, or anything like that. That really helps too. And, you know, get the fundamentals right. So you want to make sure that the website loads good. It looks sharp. It's got pictures of your trucks. The branding is there. It looks good on mobile. Um, is your website mobile friendly? So, you know, when it loads on mobile, you still want it to look really nice and sharp. And you also want to click to call button everywhere somebody scrolls, whether that's at the top or whether that's at the bottom. Um, I think both are going to be equally as fine, but you want to make sure they can just tap a button with their thumb and give you a call. That's going to help increase the amount of leads you get just doing that one thing alone if you don't have it now. So 4.8 billion people now on mobile phones. This one's probably higher now. I'm sure it's even more, probably over 5 billion people. Three out of five consumers search for local businesses on their smartphone. And different areas are higher than that, right? Different demographics. Google reports that 40% of mobile consumers turn to a competitor's site after a bad mobile or web experience. You've probably seen it too, right? Like you clicked on somebody's website on your phone 
and it doesn't load properly. It's not properly mobile optimized. So you have to like scroll to the right or scroll to the left to read the text. And eventually you just give up. You get frustrated. You're like, I'm just going to get off this website. Don't make that mistake. Make sure your website's not looking like that because that's going to harm your you know, conversion. Uh, is your website optimized for converting people that visit? Do you have the phone number on every page? Are you using authentic images and videos and photos of your team, trucks, and everything else? Do you have a compelling call to action uh, after a block of text, like a good call to action every time? Are you giving customers the option to engage via chat or two-way text? That's pretty important. Is your website mobile friendly with an easy click to call button? And is your website fast loading on both desktop and mobile? So what are your takeaways? Write those things down. Like if you had a couple of things that maybe aren't in place, maybe just take a note like, hey, we need a click to call button on our website. That's going to drastically improve our, our calls. And it will. We've seen it time and time again. Sometimes people have a really good looking website and there's no click to call anywhere on the website. And if you look at 70% of the visitors are going to be coming from mobile smartphone type device, gosh, you know, you want an easy click to call button on there. If you don't, people are just going to hit the back button and get off because nobody wants to like save the phone number and then go to their dial pad, type in the phone number, you know, with their thumbs. It just takes too long. People are just not going to do that. So make sure you've got some of those things in place. Next thing is, is just search your business name. So let's search your business name on Google, you know, Yahoo, Bing, anywhere. Search your business name and just see what pops up. Is that what you want your customers to see, right? When somebody does a search of your business name, do you see your Google business profile in the, in the far right over here with a high Google rating, lots of Google reviews, pictures of you guys in action where people can get a feel of your business and actually want to give you a call? Do they see your website here at the top of the page when they do a search for your business? That's another important factor is your website shows up first. You don't want somebody else's website showing up first for your business name. That's, that's not good. You're not going to get a lot of those clicks. So you want your website showing up first, your social media platform showing up after that. And the way you do that is, is to properly name your website pages, properly name your social media pages, and get reviews. You know, Google's going to put more weight on you know, social channels and Google business profiles that have the most reviews and the highest ratings. So that's a super important factor there. Um, so do you like what you see when you search for your business? If not, let's change it. Let's get some more reviews. Let's get some things done on the website. Uh, does SEO still matter? You may have that question. Like a lot of people are talking about direct mail, we're talking about putting signs out, we're talking about paid ads, Facebook ads, et cetera. Does SEO still matter is a big question. Um, but you can see here, if somebody searches for tree service Atlanta, you can type in any city you want across the United States. It doesn't really matter across the world for that matter. And the top three businesses up here in the maps and the top three to five websites below the maps are going to get the majority of the organic leads that come through from the first page. So yes, SEO still matters. And you can't rely on pay-per-click alone. You want a multi-pronged approach strategy. And I'll show you why here. So you want a strong website with good content, user experience, pages for each of your services, pages for all the cities that you serve, um, unique content on every single page keyword in the title and the H1 header, meta description that sells the click, name, address, phone number in the footer, blog with ongoing updates, syndication, uh, focus on page speed, uh, and you know a good website presence. This is just kind of a graphic of sometimes what could happen with SEO leads versus paid ads. A lot of times your organic leads from the Google map coupled with all the leads that come from your website are 20, 50, 100% less than your paid ad leads. So you definitely want to do organic SEO, right? It's just, it's really good to be doing both because showing up in the paid ad section, then the Google Maps section, then the organic section below the maps, you're going to scoop up way more lead flow by being in all four places. So here's an example. Like, let's say you do a search for tree removal, your city. Being this top result in the map is going to get you a ton of phone calls and high visibility it's going to brand your company and people are going to see you all the time. <clears throat> so you want to make sure your website's properly optimized to get there, right? This is going to help your map listing too. You want the title of each one of your pages for SEO purposes to be named properly. So wherever your city and town is, you want the website main page to be tree service that city, you know, tree service your city, maybe slash your business name. You know, you want the first paragraph header to have a similar keyword in it. 
you know, second paragraph header to have another keyword that's similar to that. So maybe one paragraph, you have tree removal, tree service. The next paragraph header is tree trimming and pruning. The next paragraph is land clearing or arborist consultations or tree and plant healthcare, things like that. And you want geotagged images with alt image text. So every text, you know, image that you have on your website, you can put an alt text in the website settings about what that image is about. And Google picks that up, right? And you want sufficient content, usually between 1,000 and 1,500 words per page is sufficient to get good results. Uh, Off-page SEO, so if you want to get the best results off the page, is claim and optimize your Google business profile, right? That's number one. You want a Google business profile optimized. It used to be called the Google My Business. Now it's called the Google business profile. So you may have heard like both of those. It's just another word for Google My Business is now called Google Business Profile. Uh, get lots of citations and directory submissions across the web. So get your name, address, phone number, and website address listed in all of these online directories. That's going to help you guys knock it out of the park and get a big SEO footprint across the web. Uh, build up your reviews, you know, and you can use tools like Jobber, Single Ops, Review Buzz, Customer Lobby, Podium. There's there's a hundred of them. Um, BirdEye. There's a bunch of different ones. Uh, build authoritative links back to your website from other websites. So a backlink for SEO, you may have heard the term backlink before. Backlink is just a link from another website. Let's say you go to another website and there's a clickable link for the best tree service in Atlanta, Georgia. Click here. That clickable link goes over to your website, right? That's a link back to your website. That's what a backlink is. Basically, is another website that's actually linking to your website. Um, and then you want to, you know, syndicate strategic content across the web. And that's with blog articles, press releases, et cetera. So are you building links back to your website? So more than 70% of the battle uh, with SEO is getting links back to your website. We've got a strategic uh, press release strategy that we use plugged into each one of our client websites. And it really helps with that building authority section and getting the backlinks back to your website. But if you're doing this on your own, you maybe have a tool there's other places you can do to get a good backlink. A good backlink is to be members of TCIA because you get a directory listing on their website with a link back to your website. ISA, same thing, um, et cetera, right? Better Business Bureau, Chamber of Commerce, those types of things are really good backlinks. Um, after you optimize the pages, of course, you know, for the on page. So again, we'll kind of further drill this home. Do you have a main keyword on the title of every page of your website? So if this page is tree removal of your city, Put tree removal your city in the title. If this page is about land clearing in your city, make sure the page name is land clearing your city, right? The title of the page needs to be congruent with the keyword and the service that you're providing. Uh, do you have each, you have a page for each one of the core services? So a dedicated page with a full page write-up of everything. Tree trimming, tree pruning, tree health care, plant health care, tree fertilization, land clearing, like any service you have, you want a full page for it. Because all of that content and all of those pages is what's going to make you the authoritative website in the local area. Does your website come up for the most important keywords that people search for, right? Your city tree service, your city tree removal companies, that type of thing. Do you show up for that? If you do, you're going to get a lot more leads than the next guy. Are you consistently creating new content such as blog articles and inbound links back to your website? So what did you learn? If you looked at the website part that we just talked about and also the SEO, how to get ranked, how to get better rank improvements and show up kind of more visible on that first page, what did you notice? Maybe some of the things you're doing now, but you need to add. You need to get those added to what your marketing strategy is right now. Anything you'd like to share or ask a question, feel free to pop it in there. And hopefully it's working. Um, sometimes Zoom changes the settings from, from slide to slide or from webinar to webinar. So it should be available there. So if you have any questions, let me know. There's a chat too. Um, <clears throat> it looks like that's just for hosts and panelists. There's the questions and answer right there. So the next part is, are you ranking on the Google map? I know we talked about it a minute ago with the organic, just a little bit. We kind of touched over it, but are you ranking on the map here? It's a big deal if you rank number one, two, or three on the Google maps. Um, do the Google maps matter? Yeah, they do. And here's the statistic. So approximately 40, 45% of all the clicks on the first page of Google when people search for tree service near me or tree service my city and state are going to be clicking on the Google map, right? And if they click on the Google map and you're not showing up there, that's a big deal. That means you're not really going to get a lot of those calls, but 
it really is important to get right here. And the way that you get right here is by getting a lot of reviews on your Google business profile all the time. Literally everybody you do a job for, there needs to be some sort of like programmatic, systematic plan in place to request a review. Because these reviews are generally the most important thing now we're seeing with Google in getting in that first top two or three positions on the Google Maps. And again, guys, I mean, the statistics are 40, 45% of people click on the Google Maps. And the reason is because a lot of people feel like that's a local result. So they click on like, you know, tree service near me on their phone. And they're going to want to see the ones on the maps because they feel like they're closer, quote unquote, to where they're standing at their house. So these are really, really important, right? Some people click on the ads. About 40% of people click on the local service ads or the Google ads. Another 40, 45% click on the Google maps. So you definitely want to be there. Uh, it really, really helps. So yes, Google maps really do matter a lot. Here's a couple of snapshots of a few of our clients in a one month period, 71 phone calls to a Google business profile. Now, this was over the summer, right? During busy season. But I mean, if you're up at the top, you're going to get a lot of calls pretty much. Another one month statistic, 60 phone calls. And these are actually on the low end compared to some people. We've got some that get 120 sometimes per month. Um, but you can see here, website visitors was another 54. So in addition to the 71 calls on the Google business profile, there was also a bunch of leads that came directly from the website as well. Right. So it's like, that's probably a hundred leads right there from being number one through three on the Google maps. Same thing with this one, 60 calls, but 66 additional visitors to the website. Some of those people converted once they got to the website, Google maps, when you go into the Google business profile, it only shows you how many people click on that phone icon on their mobile device to call you directly. That's the only thing it registers there for calls. So there's plenty more that come through from your website after they click on that. So again, to reiterate the proven formula for getting ranked in the three pack on the maps, get all of your directories right. Be listed in all the directories, right? Get in all those directories at yp.com, um, superpages.com, hot pages. There's a million of them. And you want to get listed in all of those online accurately and consistently across all those. You want to get your pages optimized for search, which also influences where your map listing on the Google Maps ranks as well. So make sure all your pages are ranked and optimized for search. Um, this is your Google business profile. Again, it used to be called Google My Business. And then last but not least, focus on getting Google reviews all day, every day. That needs to be one of the most proactive things you guys focus on because I can tell you it leads to greater results on the Google Maps for SEO and on the local service ads. It's the biggest driver these days. So is your company optimized to rank on the maps? Have you claimed and verified your Google business profile? Do you have the login to it? Have you properly optimized your Google business profile? Are you on all the major online directory listings with the same name, address, and phone number? How many online reviews do you have? That's big. Do you have a proactive strategy uh, for getting online reviews every single day? Are you posting to Google My Business weekly and responding to questions? So again, this is your foundation. Is it strong, right? Are you showing up everywhere? If you are, you're going to win online, right? That's just all there is to it. Because when people do searches, they've got a need. They've got a need for tree service, a need for tree health care, a need for land clearing, whatever it may be. And when they do the search, whatever the top results are, they're going to give those tree companies a call. By default, you're going to get those calls. Um, so it's basically your search engine optimization, your Google Maps, uh, all these other things we're about to get into here in just one second. So is your foundation strong? Website, organic SEO. So anonymous attendees. So one question is, is how do we get spam people off of our contact form on our website? Well, you can set up either a checkbox on your contact form, which will eliminate most of it because that requires a human click the checkbox to fill out the form. So instead of just filling out the form with some sort of like spam bot or something, they'll have to click the checkbox. If that doesn't do it, then you move to the next step, which is installing a CAPTCHA on your website form. And most website form builders nowadays have a CAPTCHA option and that'll require them to punch in something or, you know, hey, how many signs do you see or how many cars do you see in this image right here? So I hope that helps. Uh, what if you have a large service area? How can you show up in a zip code that is 15 miles away from the physical location of your office? So that's a great question. So on the Google Maps, typically, if you're in a well-populated area, urban area, you're only going to show up in your local area on the maps for the most part, right? Like if you're 20 miles away, 
there's going to be dozens and dozens of other tree service companies in between where yours is 20 miles away and where you're at 20 miles away. So they're going to show some more of those local companies on the Google Maps. But what you can do, and this is the reason why we recommend a comprehensive marketing strategy, is you want to show up on the Google ads in that other area 20 miles away. You want to show up on the Google local service ads and you want to show up below the maps in the organic section. So that way, in every other market but your Google My Business area, you're showing up in three out of the four areas online. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and then will we receive this video? We'll help to create a checklist to complete. So I hit it all. Yeah, Carrie, it will be. There will be a replay of this. Thanks for your question. Um, all right. So are you taking advantage? Now we're going to shift to paid marketing opportunities on Google search. So we talked about your website. Your search engine optimization, your organic results showing up there below the paid ads. Now let's talk about the top result on the page when people do searches. Are you taking advantage of the paid marketing opportunities? So when somebody does a search for tree removal near me or tree service, things like that, the top result nowadays is going to be the Google local service ads. And this goes back to why it is so important to getting reviews consistently on your Google My Business, Google Business Profile because those are going to show on your Google local service ad platform here as well. So you want to make sure you're getting reviews all the time and get them on your Google business profile, because those will then stick to your Google local service ad profile too, but not the other way around. So if you get a, re a review only on your Google local service ad platform, that will not post to your Google map listing. But if you get the reviews on your Google map listing, AKA your Google business profile, that will then post on your local service ad platform as well. So the paid ads are the Google local service ads first, and then the Google ads second. These are the links below the Google local service ads. So we're talking about Google AdWords. It used to be called, now it's called Google ads. Pay per click is what PPC stands for. So pay per click marketing. Local service ads is the Google guaranteed ads that most people understand what that means because there's that green checkbox that says verified. Uh, Being Yahoo ads are very similar to search ads on Google. Pretty similar. You set up the description, the, the call to action, the website link they click on. Uh, you can do paid Angie's list, paid yp.com, paid Yelp, things like that. Can Google ads and pay per click really drive an ROI? Let's take a look at it. Let's say you're getting 80 leads from Google search ads. And this is a combination from your local service ads and a combination of perhaps your Google ads. So you got two separate platforms here. You're getting leads, maybe you get 40 leads a month, 50 leads a month from Google local service ads, and you get another 30, 40 leads from Google ads, right? 80 leads. Let's say you convert 40% of those because those are pay-per-click ads. They're not referrals. They're people finding you for the first time. And let's say you book 40% of those and you get 32 book jobs. And let's say your average ticket as a tree service business is $1,100. So 32 jobs times $1,100 is roughly $35,000 in revenue um, on $3,200 in ad spend. So let's say you get that many leads. That's 40, 50 bucks per lead, roughly, if you do the 3,200 divided by 80. And so, yeah, that's a great ROI. It's 11x ROI. And it's going to fluctuate month to month, season to season. You know, you're going to probably get a higher ROI March through November a little bit lower ROI in the colder spells or different areas of the country, depending on the common, uh, competition. But the ROI is there. If you get the clicks, you're going to generally get the calls. Why most pay-per-click campaigns fail? Ooh, I like this one. So a lot of people that we start working with have got some kind of preconceived notion that pay-per-click ads or Google ads don't work. And that's okay. Um, but what, what happens is a lot of times they've only set up one ad group for all the services, right? So if somebody clicks on your ad and you've only got, you know, one subject that says like, you know, XYZ tree service call today, that's all it says. That doesn't really specify what the searcher typed into the search bar. So you need to have congruent ads that reflect what the person searched. So that's a lot of different ad groups and set up really, really thoroughly. So that way the headline of your ads matches what the person typed in. So if they typed in tree trimming near me, you want an ad that says number one tree trimming service, call today, free estimate. You know, if somebody types in tree removal, you want your ad to then display number one tree removal service, call today, free estimate, that type of thing. You want to make sure it mirrors what they typed in. Um, and you need specific text ads, descriptions, and landing pages for different groups of keywords and search terms that people type in. Very thoroughly built. 
Uh, and then a lot of people just don't have a strong call to action or an offer on the landing page once people get there. And then the other thing we see is Google's constantly bombarding business owners, calling them all day, every day. Hey, do you want to set up your advertising? We'll help you do it for free. And so Google will then have you set up what's called a smart campaign. And from our experience, they're not very smart. Um, they're just really easy to set up, right? So you click your budget, you click, you know, tree service, you click, here's my website. And the targeting is just very broad. So a lot of times you'll waste half or upwards of 65% of your budget every day on just irrelevant, um, crappy clicks that don't really make sense for people looking to hire a tree service company. We see that all the time. So these are some of the reasons why people kind of have a preconceived notion that pay-per-click campaigns fail. So um, are you tapping into Google local services? So first, let's talk about that. If you um, do a search for tree removal near me or tree removal in your city, do you see these at the top of the page in your market? And if so, are you there? Can you see how this is pretty much a local digital billboard for your business? I mean, we've got clients getting 30 calls, 60 calls, 80 calls a month just from this platform alone right here. It's basically a digital billboard that you only pay per call. It's a very good platform to be on. We got a couple of questions here. Let's see, a couple of questions. Yeah, so Kathy asks, if you were to list the top three items for a self-employed business owner who is in the field daily to start and see what improvements need to be made, what would you recommend? I would recommend for sure Google local service ads, website, and SEO for the Google Maps. That way you're showing up in the local service ads, the Google Maps area, and then your website below that. I think those three are the strongest. Uh, Google ads are great too. But I think the most visibility is from these Google local service ads. As long as you get good reviews and focus on those, I think those are probably the best. Um, so if you're tapping into Google local service ads, you're going to get good results if you're showing up there mostly. So are you running Google local service ads with a maxed out budget in your local market? Because you're only paying per call with those. So you might as well, if you have the budget to do that. Are you running retargeting ads to your unconverted leads? Are you running Google ads? Are you strategically targeting with specific ad groups, text ads, and landing pages to kind of vary the message based on what the searcher typed in? That's a big deal too. Do you have conversion tracking in place to track leads back to the ad group and keywords? You know what's converting. Are you running targeting Facebook ads to the ideal prospect base? Do you have a premium ad on Angie's List, Yelp, City Search, YP.com? Are you buying paper lead services, Home Advisor, Angie, things like that? So what did you learn? What did you notice? What would you like to share? Anything you'd like to share? Or do you have any other questions and answers? Happy to type in there and um, answer your question if you have any. Great question so far, guys. Appreciate it. So the next part is, is are you active on social media? So we went through your website, your search engine optimization, your organic results. And then we went through paid ad opportunities, where to show up on paid ads. And so... Now we want to look at this right here. Are you active on social media? This is a really good place to be, guys. Just a nice active page where you're showing up there. Like this particular business has got 1,400 likes, 1,400 followers. Um, this is going to get you more repeat business and more referrals because everybody that's liked your page or engaged with your page are people that know you, like you, and trust you. And so it's really good to constantly share on social media. Um, plus, Here's the other compelling reasons why to use social media. I know some people hate it. Some people don't like it. If you don't like it, you need to find somebody that can do it for you because I promise it'll make a difference in your business. There's billions of users on social media. That's number one. And all of your friends are probably on there or have an account or pop in there from time to time, right? Um, you probably have hundreds of friends on your profile. You probably have thousands of connected friends to your friends, right? So your, your friends list may be 500. But their friends list collectively between all 500 of your friends could be tens of thousands of people, right? So it's free to post. You can post on your Facebook page for free if you want every day when you're out in the field. Take pictures of your crews, your trucks, you know, doing work and then just upload them right to your Facebook page. Boom, you've got a new post on Facebook. And then you can also connect your Instagram account where it posts on both or post them on Instagram. And that'll also post on Facebook too. You just got to connect the two accounts. Now you're kind of knocking out two birds with one stone. But gosh, this is a very, very good place to be active on and get leads from social media. Don't overlook the social media, guys. 
And you can also run retargeting ads, which we'll get into here in a second, on social media where people that click on your website, click on your Google Ads landing page, click on your Facebook page, you can run retargeting ads, very inexpensive ads to those people who have just recently seen your brand or been to your website. The next part is, is are you leveraging email marketing? This is big in today's day and age. If you're building up your database of customers, and let's say you've got a database of customers and you've been in business eight years, 15 years, and you got a database of 2,000, 5,000, 8,000 customers that you've given estimates to or done business with, that's a massive list that you can tap into and get referrals from and get repeat business from. So that's mass really big. You definitely want to do that. And some of the tools you can use on your own, you can use Constant Contact, you can use MailChimp, AWeber. Um, we do this with our program as well on our platform with our software. So it just really makes a difference. Um, just building a fence around your customer base and just keep, you know, continually reminding them that you're out there. Are you leveraging? Uh, so basically the email marketing is, you know, send an email after every service call requesting a review. That's a good practice. And if you're using a CRM tool like Jobber or Single Ops or something like that, you can put a canned response in there. It goes out on every invoice, every paid invoice, you know, following up. Um, send out a monthly email newsletter to remain top of mind and drive more repeat and referral business to your customers. Are you doing the email marketing? If you do it consistently, I promise you'll get results from it. Next, kind of along the same lines of your database marketing, are you leveraging text marketing? So text marketing is massive. Now you do have to get pre-approved now as a business to do text marketing. It's not just set up and go. You've got to get approved. It's called A2P registration. They're basically just punches in your business, your EIN number, a couple other details, and, and you get approved in there. And then you can start sending text messages out. And this is a big deal because you can also send out text messages to your customers in addition to the emails. And text messages have about a 98% open rate. So in my book, that's pretty darn good. So you want to make sure people are seeing your message and you can offer different incentives, you know, like a, a first of the year, you know, hey, X, XYZ Tree Service is offering 15% off tree trimming and pruning in the month of January. Click here to re redeem your coupon, right? And you can have like an image with a coupon, call now to book your service call, you know, call now to book a free estimate, that type of thing. And these types of things, these types of incentives give people the reason to give you a call. And it's good to do when it gets a little bit slower too, because you're proactively marketing to your database. Next, are you leveraging direct mail? And some of these things we went over last month in our winter marketing formula webinar, but I want to show you what the comprehensive approach is, right? So part of the overall comprehensive marketing approach, your 2024 digital marketing plan also includes direct mail. And direct mail is awesome for saturating zip codes that you want to target and you want to go give estimates in uh, daily. So like, let's say you want to target four or five zip codes to really proactively go give estimates. This will A, get you a lot of estimates in one area. B, keep your windshield time down so you're not spending so much gas and stuff going all the way across you know, your whole service area. You're kind of keeping them centralized into one area. And, um, and it also makes you kind of the big fish tree company in that area because they're going to see your postcards and then neighbors are going to see your trucks when you drive by and you do some work for the neighbors. You can put your signs out. All of those things kind of work in congruence with each other for your branding and getting more impressions for your business. Um, the next thing is, is are you leveraging yard signs, right? Some people like to do these, some people don't. But I would recommend, you know, any job you're doing, just put a sign out in the yard. It may take you a day, two days, whatever to do the job. But right now in the wintertime, especially, you're going to get more mileage out of your signs because there's less grass mowing. There's less people picking things up in the wintertime, right? So it's going to stick and stay there for maybe a week or two, maybe a month sometimes if people aren't touching the grass. So put your sign out in the yard. I mean, of course, you might want to get permission from the homeowner. Hey, we're going to put, put our sign in the front yard when we're doing this work. Is that okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. You know, and then if they ask you to pick it up and they ask you to pick it up, then you don't lose a sign. You can reuse it, but have a clearly re you know, readable phone number and tree service really large on the sign. You can put whatever message you want. It doesn't have to be best rates. You could just put free consultation, you know, professional service, 25 years in business, you know, whatever you want to put on there, but make sure they know who to call and how to call. So that leads me to, after generate all these leads, your website, your SEO, your Google Maps, your paid ad opportunities with local service ads, Google ads, being Yahoo ads, Facebook ads, and your email marketing to your customer database, your text marketing to your customer database, direct mail, and putting signs out. These are lots of different avenues for leads to be coming in and your phone's ringing consistently. One of the biggest things that we see 
room for improvement is unconverted leads. So people get all these leads, but A, they don't answer the phone, but 60% of the time or 70% of the time. So they're missing out on 20, 30, 40% of their leads. And then B, they're not getting back with website form submissions and things like that quick enough. So they're going to move on to the next tree company. So you're going to miss that lead. So is lead flow really the problem for your business? And maybe you get plenty of leads, but you need some sort of systematic approach to answer the phone, punch in the details and convert that lead. Everybody's business is a little different. Everybody's got challenges in different departments, right? Here's the problem. 50 to 60% of inbound leads leave unconverted. And another part of it is, is 90% of web forms fail to convert as well. Unless somebody is really on top of things in your office, you know, really watching the email form submissions that come into your email when somebody fills out a form on the website. If people aren't watching that, man, you're going to miss a lot of opportunities to go out and give estimates for big jobs, little jobs, everything in, in between, right? And so you want to make sure you convert those web forms. So here's why. I mean, leads that are not followed up within 15 minutes go cold. I mean, if you go to somebody's website and you fill out a form and then four hours later you get a call, you're not going to really remember that you went to that website four hours ago. You're not going to know who's calling you four hours ago. But if you fill out a form and somebody calls you within like a minute or five minutes, you're going to remember that you just filled out a form, right? So you're just more likely to get that lead on the phone if you get in touch with them quickly. Uh, the average customer must be followed up with five to seven times before booking. So keep that in mind. You need to text them, email them, all the above. Today's consumer prefers to interact via text message versus phone call or email. So keep that in mind too. If you have a business line for your phone, for your business, make sure that it's textable because a lot of people are going to text your phone number. And if you don't receive text messages, how are you going to respond to them to book that appointment, right? So it's a big deal. Um, and tree service companies not answering the phone consistently is another issue that we see. So here's the solution. Leverage marketing automation to follow up with web forms within the first two minutes of submission via phone and text message. So one of the things that works really well, when somebody fills out a get a free estimate or a contact form on your website, you can have a systematic phone call. As soon as they submit that form, a phone call from a software will go to your office. You get a phone call, you answer the phone. It says, press one, you have a new website lead. You press one and it literally dials out the new lead on your website. So you're on the phone with that person within 30 seconds or a minute, as soon as they submit that form. That's going to be powerful because they're going to answer the phone most of the time if you're calling them that quick. If you wait, again, 15, 30 minutes, three hours, they're not going to answer the phone in most cases because they don't know who it is. But if you answer it right away, they know they just fill the form out. Automate the follow-up so that every prospect is touched five plus times and able to engage via two-way text messaging. So when somebody does um, enter the, the web form, right? Make sure you have a call to them immediately, like I just explained. So just an automated call right to that lead as soon as they fill it out. You'll be on the phone with them probably before the email comes to your inbox to says you have a new lead from your website. It's that quick. And then also you can shoot a text message with the same software to that person that just filled out that form. Hey, thanks so much for you know, reaching out to XYZ Tree Service. We'll be in touch with you very shortly, right? And they get that text and then boom, all of a sudden they're getting a call. It's like, oh yeah, I'm going to answer the phone because I just filled out the form. So you're just going to be highly likely to get that person on the phone. It's, it's simple math too, guys. Um, let's say you get 100 leads and you're only converting 30% of them because you're not very good at responding or catching the phone or you know booking the appointment. And you book 30 jobs out of 100. That's 30%, not very good. Average ticket, 650 bucks. Well, then 30 jobs at $650 a piece. Average is 19,500. Same thing over here. You have a different approach. You're converting more of these people. You're getting them on the phone as soon as they fill out the form. 70% conversion rate because you have automated follow-up, text messages, phone calls, everything else. You're going to book 70%, 100 leads times 70%, and then you get 70 jobs times 650. I mean, you're doubling the revenue from the same amount of leads. That's why it's so important to have some sort of automation for your leads that come in. That right there alone would pay for any marketing campaign that you got going on. If you're converting that much higher of a percentage of the same leads you're already getting. Are you leveraging email marketing and automation? So again, we'll go back to that on this last little section here. Are you following up with your leads within five minutes or less via phone, SMS, and email? Uh, do you have conversion campaigns in place that follow up with unconverted leads five to seven times via phone, SMS, and email until they book their service call or estimate? I mean, and after all, they reached out to you. So 
don't feel bashful about follow it up on text messaging and phone calls a lot because they reached out, right? So are you sending out a monthly email newsletter to essentially build a fence around your customer base and keep reminding them of the services that you do? It's very, very important as well. Um, are you leveraging email to get online reviews and to draw customers into your social media profiles? That's another big thing that you can do. Do you have the tools in place to track your ROI? So namely, you know, your Google Analytics, um, you know, your online rankings, uh, call tracking, you know, to know how many calls came from the Google local service ads, the Google ads, Google Maps, website, et cetera. And then, you know, put a CRM or something else in place to track all of your lead sources and build them out. And a good, a good way to do that is just like with a CRM system like Single Ops, Arbor Gold, Jobber, Arbo Star, something like that. Punch everybody in that tool. And you'll be so happy you started that a year, two years, five years down the road, because now you've got a central place with all of your customers in one database. You don't have like shoe boxes of invoices, big boxes of invoices. And oh my goodness, I don't know how I'm going to put all these together and find my customer database, right? That's, you don't want to go back and have to do that. So it's easier just to start right now where you're at and start doing that if you haven't yet. You have the tracking in place to gauge your return on investment. So again, that's achieved by putting Google Analytics on your website, keyword rank tracking, call tracking, dashboard showing the cost per lead, total spend you know that you spent and everything else, and a CRM system to keep up with all of your customers. And again, guys, this is the accelerated growth model. This is how you grow your tree service business. Is you got to generate the leads in the first place with organic website, Google Maps, everything else, your rankings, paid ads, right? Retargeting ads, all that. And then database marketing with email and text messages. That's how you drive the leads. And then you want to convert them with your Google reviews, your reputation, your follow-up and your automation, right? And then you want to optimize the results. So whatever's giving you the best results, we want to increase that and possibly decrease things that aren't giving you as good a result. So another visual of this, another uh, one from the beginning of the slides when we first started. So it's organic driving leads, Paid ads, organic with your website, your SEO, your Google Maps, paid ads, Google local service ads, Google ads, being Yahoo ads, database marketing to your current customers with emails, texts, you know, you got uh, direct mail marketing, putting signs out, all of those different things. And then you want to maximize those leads by having a great website, good user experience, good reputation that gives them the reason to give you a call over the competition and automation, following up with them consistently and often. And then you want to optimize the results. You know, how much did you spend? How many leads did you get? Did you get? And then how much revenue did you produce? So, you know, you're driving the leads via several different channels that we've already went over. You're maximizing the conversions from the website, the reputation and automation. And then you're going to optimize those results. And how are you doing? This is our um, ultimate internet marketing checklist for tree service contractors. And you can get a free copy of this on our website at treeservicedigital.com. And what this is, it's kind of a, a high level overview of everything you need to be doing for your online marketing. And again, you can get a free copy. Just go to our website, treeservicedigital.com. You'll see it on the homepage, uh, the ultimate internet marketing checklist for tree service companies. And then you just click on, yes, I want my copy. And you put your name and email. We'll send it right to you uh, on a link, like a PDF. But yeah, this is, this is really good because it kind of shows you, it's like a quick reference guide for you. Uh, we also mail these out with a copy of the book because it's that important. Um, do you guys have any other questions? I want to open it up for a few more questions now that we've went through most of the material. If you have any, um, you can post anonymously. You don't have to pop your name in there if you don't want to. So we got several great questions today. Thanks, everybody, for participating and answering questions. This is very important coming up in the 2024, your digital marketing plan. So what are some of your action items? You know, and you can just write these down on your end. Maybe what are some of the things that you want to do and implement for the upcoming year? And gosh, guys, I mean, this comes around very fast. Like every year, I'm always surprised when I'm doing the new year digital marketing plan, because it seems like it was just a couple of months ago we did the one for 2023, and now we're already doing the one for 2024. So what are some of the top uh, action items that you want to do uh, for your business or some things that maybe you didn't see? Um, let's see, we got a couple of questions here. Can we still get a free copy of your book? Forgot to get one when you when you offered last month. Yes, of course. Just shoot me an email, uh, Wes at treeservicedigital.com. 
and we'll need your, you know, your name and your mailing address. And of course, we'll shoot out a free copy to you. Um, happy to do that. Or we've got a form also on the website for us. You can go to the website, um, trueservicedigital.com. You'll see at the bottom of the page, get a, get your copy of a free book. Click on that. You can enter your information there. It makes it a little bit easier. Um, and then does it matter if the postcard is EDDM? Uh, if it's, oh, I see. If it's a flyer or a postcard, it just wanted to, uh, just really depends. I mean, every market's a little different, right? So sometimes um, the flyers, eight and a half by 11, will convert a little bit better or get a little bit more phone call volume than the postcards. And then some areas, the postcards will. So I would say just test. Um, what we did find though, is that the more commercial, the more glossy, the more expensive the postcard looks, the lower the response rate in a lot of situations. Um, I don't know if people just feel like it's maybe a more expensive tree company. They're not sure if they want to call, but the flyers do do really, really well. If it's a simple flyer, hey, we're going to be in your neighborhood. You know, it's a good time to get on the um, get on the calendar. Give us a call and we'll be out there and give you a free estimate. So those, I, I would say just test both of those. Oh, you're welcome, William. No problem. Uh, thanks for being on. Um, really appreciate you joining today. What do you think is the minimum investment in a digital advertising to move the needle? Well, that's kind of a trick question. It, it really depends on the business that that you would be referring to. So if you have you know good revenue and established business, I mean the Small Business Association Administration, SBA, on their website, you can see it. They recommend about five percent of your gross revenue as a company to put into marketing and advertising. So we see that's pretty good number. Um, you can always spend more than that if you really want to be aggressive and grow fast. Um, but 5% is good. So if you're a million dollar company, that's $50,000 a year, for example. If you're doing half a million dollars a year, that's $25,000 a year. But you do need to do some sort of marketing. Um, and we see, you know, as long as you're spending anywhere from three to 5K per month with multiple different channels, right? Um, website, SEO, Google Maps, writing content, doing paid ads on Google, Yahoo, Bing, local service ads, Facebook ads. If you're doing all of these things simultaneously, you will increase your lead flow rapidly. Uh, and that will help, you know, book more appointments, keep more people busy and kind of get your name out there. So good question. It's really kind of a loaded question. It depends on the business as far as the minimum investment goes. If you're just starting out, I would say just make sure you get a minimum viable website online. Your Google business profile is verified. So you're on the maps and start getting reviews yesterday, right? Get reviews every day, all day. Just focus on that one thing and that'll get really, really good results for you um, moving forward. But set clear goals. This is what we covered today. Uh, set clear goals and targets for the year. Realign you know, your key performance indicators and tracking to achieve outcomes. Map out your plan for accomplishment. Uh, and this is basically your budget your different marketing channels and important trends set up for massive, massive success in 2024 and beyond. Um, and again, here's some testimonials we got. This is a couple of companies we've, we've worked with and got some testimonials uh, with country trees out in Texas. They're helping tree services all over the country, have better SEO, better websites, better Facebook ads, and access to all those statistics. They're always there to help out with a great customer support staff and saves us a lot of time and a lot of money. Thanks, Josh, for that review. And then um, Ray with Nature's Dream Landscape and Tree Service. Before working with Tree Service Digital, our rankings were really low. We were spending a bunch of money and not getting any results, and we didn't know how to fix it. Tree Service Digital has done an amazing job. We are ranking number one online for most all of our keywords and what services we offer. Phones are ringing a lot. I would say six to seven calls per day. Google rankings and lead flows went through the roof. Highly recommend them, just not to my competitors. Thanks, Ray. No problem there. Appreciate you. Um, 5% uh, of net. And so the SBA recommends 5% of your gross revenue. So not your profit, not your net income, but your gross revenue, your top line revenue, how much you're invoicing, you know, per year, your gross revenue. Um, and then, you know, that's, that's the 5% they're referring to. Um, but if you guys want a free online marketing plan review, a free digital marketing game plan for your business, just go to our website, treeservicedigital.com. And you can go to forward slash schedule. There'll be a link on the website if you click on it, if you want to schedule your 2024 digital marketing plan review and kind of get a game plan for your business based on where you're at and where you want to go. Happy to do that. That's free. Um, there is an offer to work with us. Of course, we can help you implement all of this, but there is no uh, pressure of any kind. We just show you what works, uh, show you some testimonials, 
how other people are doing. And uh, it's your decision from that point forward. So thank you so much for joining us today and you know, going through your 2024 digital marketing plan. And I appreciate all of you guys asking questions and stuff too, because that makes a big difference. Helps it kind of you know, validate that, that what we're doing here kind of helps people. Um, but yeah, if you got any questions, let's talk, right? Give us a call. Uh, our number at the office is 770-637-3707. And uh, you can also go to treeservicedigital.com forward slash schedule to book an appointment for next week. And we'd be happy to talk with you about your business, where you're at, where you want to go and uh, how to get there. All right. If anybody has any last minute questions, happy to answer them. Uh, Kathy says, thank you. This was incredible. You're welcome, Kathy. Thanks so much. A lot of this is for clients looking for our type of service. Any strategies for going to find business? Um, yeah, I mean, you, Patrick, you can use this for, this is search marketing, highly search marketing, and then also just marketing to your current customer base. But people are going to be finding your business to give you a call. I'm hoping that answers your question there. Uh, looking for our type of service. Any strategies for going to find business? Um, when you say going to find business, are you talking about going to find like other businesses to buy or just finding finding business in your local market for tree service? Carrie, thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you guys for being on. Appreciate you. Thanks everybody for being here. Have a great Friday. Hopefully I answered everybody's questions. If not, shoot me an email, Wes at TreeServiceDigital.com. Happy to answer them there and uh, make it a great day. Great December and knock it out of the park in 2024. If you need our help, we're always here. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good one.